is like this. So, for the beginning, I'm George Rugg. Mm. Uh, I'm from France, so sorry if my English is a bit of a boss. So, actually, I'm working um, for proprietary software on the night advisors, but my first job is for open source software. So, my first, in my first job, I have to, um, to replace a part of the operating system for Lepton and put uh, an open source kernel on it to do some uh, fancy stuff. So I, I just explain you later. So I just give you a context. So sometimes in the uh, French government, they work. And uh, in 2013, they, um, they sent a paper that say um, Embed is important for Europe, and we have to do something to be independent, and they, <coughs> and they bring the, the term softwareization. So softwareization can be defined that the founder provides chips uh, with more functionality, like Ethernet, like crypto, like everything like that you can find, you can find before on an MCU, but you can find in a bigger processor. And user with, um, the availability of things like Android or like iPhone uh, want some fancy, uh, fancy things, you know, just GUA, just touch things, uh, command your device with the voice or with gestures. And the second part is the, I don't know if there is a, um, what kind of uh, relationship between socialization and Internet of Things, but there is a correlation. So for me, IoT is the integration of all things in one network, say the thing can be uh, the tiny um, the tiny sensor, the gateway that uh, get back the data from the tiny sensor and the cloud that can make some fancy thing like, uh, I don't know, data mining to, to, uh, um, to make some decision data. And for me, I just put a, uh, an image of uh, the gold rush in the, in the United States because for me, IoT is that nobody know how they can make data, but everybody <laughs> everybody sells some useless thing, but funny thing, so it's, it's the new Eldorado thing. So, in this, in this kind of thing, is it kind of tiny sensor, that's a, this, this map, I think. Uh, so, you see there are a lot of proprietary software in the lock, like Sigal, like CMS, like Threadix. And this tiny thing provides just simple things that um, task synchronization, uh, task launch, but nothing else. And, and as you can see, uh, the required memory, internal memory for that is less than uh, 20 kilobytes of RAM. And after, if you, if you have more RAM, you can put some better system with more functionality like echoes or like uh, air temps or space rods or robots. But again, you don't have the functionality like a product operating system can add to do VFORC or to do exec or whatever you want. So we are just here. So with the same uh, constraint of RAM, you can provide more fancy thing with POSIX API. And if you have more RAM, uh, megabyte of RAM, you can uh, you can take Linux, you can take BSD, or you can take um, a proprietary software if you want. <coughs> so, what we bring in Lepton is is just a, a POSIX functionality over a, a kernel like FreeRTOS or like Ecos. So we provide uh, the POSIX um, interface with the real-time and thread uh, extension. What the, the, this funny thing and really powerful thing that called streams, for example, if you have a, a USB device, uh, the low level can be a driver, for example, slash dev, slash USB uh, something. And you have the profile, the USB profile like that is um, device driver too. So for example, if you have master device, you can put master device over the low level USB and you create another device that can be the real device for the device that you can use on the PC. <laughs> uh, 
uh, we provide the PSD socket interface for uh, network application. So you can do open, listen, and click like that, and, and bring, for example, a little tiny uh, uh, web server. Uh, for other project, we put Nanoist over it so we can. So we put Nanoist over it so you can have some fancy things for GUI or things like that with button, toolbox, or whatever you want. And to, um, to have um, uh, a, a kind of. You know, in industry, people uh, like to keep their things. Because they think they think secret is important for us, so for for them. So in this this kind of thing, we have to find a license that you that you can uh, open the core of the of the um, of the operating system when people can make the contribution and have a license that permit people to keep their thing secret if you want. So the FI license with a special leaky exception uh, will choose. Uh, and after that, the real purpose of Lepton is, for me, it's portability, because for me, you, you can take, um, for example, a library on Linux on FreeBSD and just recompile it and put it on Lepton if you want to use it. So for me, it's, uh, it's for me the real purpose. And after that, in an uh, embedded system, uh, for sensor, reliability is very important. So if we can have something that is true or that don't crash too much, it can be really, really useful. And after that, we, we can see that uh, application become complex, and for me, we have to, to keep the system understable because, understable, because uh, in this tiny uh, target, we need to, uh, to have the, um, the we, we have to, to metrize everything. So, So that's it, um, uh, the architecture of platform. <coughs> so as you can see, we have uh, above the hardware, and we can support uh, ARM 7, ARM 9, and what, what we do <coughs> is uh, only the POSIX layer and all of this mechanism to integrate uh, this free kind of kernel. So you have Sega that's the proprietary kernel, but it's the <coughs> support of platform. And the two uh, new version is the eco version and the free artist version. So we, we take this kernel, we just use the basic mechanism, for example, uh, task creation, semaphore, whatever you want. We, uh, we wrap a bit, we scan a mechanism, and we provide a, a, POSIX, um, a POSIX layer with before, uh, before, exec, whatever you want. And on top of it, you can create your process, your pseudo process, because you don't have uh, virtual memory, so the address space is the same. But it's a kind of process because you can have uh, the same uh, semantics, and you can do uh, uh, before exec. And in this in this uh, thread, in this process, you can create thread, uh, Facebook thread, or whatever you want. So that is the the global architecture of platform. And uh, how can we build our firmware? So for the firmware, is, is uh, uh, really simple. As you can see in the demo, you have a configuration configure file uh, when you put your target, what, whatever you want, what kind of process, how, how many stacks you want, uh, do you want a uh, file system, whatever you want, do you want to, to mount something in the, in the beginning of the system. Uh, we have a little parser that creates C and Dutch, uh, Dutch C and Dutch H5, for example, for the tiny root FS. And this tiny root FS can be used after for mounting and things that is not on flash or in SD card, for example. And after that, for the left hand transfer that is in Git, you put, you, we use cons, not make file to, to build our framework. And after that, uh, you have your help. And you can use, uh, for example, OpenOCD and, and GDB for the debugging or for the flashing. So, in a, in a lepton firmware, the basic component that is embedded is uh, the micro the kernel, 
for example, equals or three or two. And all of the components is uh, depending of your application. For example, if you want a, I don't know, web server, you need L, L, will be IP and Mongoose, for example. Uh, I put um, a cube on it because we put tiny gel for some fancy things and to see if, if it match. Uh, we develop a li little uh, FTP server and we can, as you see, we have a, a little uh, GUI stack with Nanox that act as a, um, a X server, a tiny, a tiny X server. And we can put on top of that um, a tiny version of a uh, full zip that's the toolkit on Linux. But there is uh, f Linux that's the toolkit that uh, bring uh, all the functionality of full zip on Linux. So it works. And uh, right now it's just the demo time. I just. Let's say, let's say for example for the, oh, you remember, I, I just uh, show you a configuration, a configuration file for the for this kind of for this kind of board. So it's uh, uh, at the uh, uh, Cortex M0 with uh, 32 kilobytes of RAM and 100. Uh, 28 uh, kilobytes of flash, and we just put left on in. And, uh, I just I just show you the configuration type, of, for example. The XML configuration file that I talk about uh, <coughs> here that describes, for example, the maximum of process you have in the uh, process table, maximum of open file that, uh, to a file descriptor, and other things like, for example, the <coughs> size. And after that, if you, if you go down, you see we can add some. Um, uh, Peripher that can be slash dev or slash whatever you want in the file system. And after that, the, so that is device driver that is general, that is independent from the platform. And after that, we have the we have the peripheral that is dependent from the platform. For example, we have the, on your app and we have uh, some some fancy led examples that is our hello world in embedded system and after that you have your init process that can be launched uh, after the kernel uh, starts and the init process uh, at the input and the output on the serial port and after that you have uh, all the pseudo binaries that, that will store in the file system for, uh, for execution so for example you see the stack and you see the priority So, I, do, I don't know if you have some time to, to make the build process right now, but I just, I just make, make a demo. This line, this is the, the tiny, tiny binary that part the uh, XML file to generate what we want. So as you can see, it part the file and it, it creates the, the binary for the target. For example, we can find in it in slash SB, whatever you want. And it creates the, 
the device driver for us. And now we have to just to, to uh, put this generated file on the global project file and compile it to generate the firmware. So as, as we say, as I say, we use cones. And we use this kind of line. So on the Opti file, in the Python, in the Python file, you can find uh, all the option to all the option to build the firmware. So for example, if you want NanoX, if you want a, a WIP, if you want whatever you want, and we can precise uh, what core do we use? Do we use a free auto score or do we use a, an eco score? So for the Cortex M0, the Altos is much, much tiny, so it's more appropriate for the firmware. So and after that, we just launched the compile line. So as you say, it's still warning, but we need your help. And that's it. We have the we have the firmware, and if. If we go in, if we go in, dot in we have the right, we have the elf. So, for example, if we want to see the size of this elf, to see what what is the size of this firmware. So, as can you as can you see, the text is uh, under one hundred. Uh, kilobytes, so you have some place around to do whatever you want. Uh, BSS, so the stack, the initial stack is uh, 1k for the um, for the starting. But uh, when I see <coughs> when I s uh, show you the demo, uh, there is on the 32 byte uh, of RAM there is uh, around uh, 12 or 30 kilo. Um, <coughs> kilobytes of RAM available for your application. So I don't I don't click the test file because uh, it's, it's gonna take time and it's really interesting to see the second demo too. The board is connected. Uh, I think it's it. So if I start, I just have a, a little tiny shell, like a Unix system. So we can make uh, the round, you can see what it is inside there. And as you can see, we have TTY S3, that's the how to console, and we have a, a tiny LED devices. Just for example, if, you, if we go in lesbian, for example, there's nothing on lesbian. Yes, so we have all the binaries that we configure and we link in the platform. So, so that's it. And I just want to show you a, a little <coughs> time. Little example of code 
for example, for, for blink LED. So it, it's just a, a little blink LED example, but <coughs> the, the, the real uh, thing is the code to do that. It's really simple it, it, and it's it's like on Linux. You just there open your LED LED devices file and just write on it and sleep. And after that you close. But the funny part, the driver part. This is the driver part of the LED. So you have just uh, a structure with points of function that is managed by the VFS and that make the abstraction. And when you open the LED, you just call the functions that configure the GPIO, and that's it. Then after that, when you want to write something, you just check the, the side of the buffer, and after this, you just do the ping pong between the two. It's really simple. So I bring a, a second demo more complex with uh, that it is a Cortex M4 from, from Freescale, that's a K60, uh, K60 board with SD card, with Ethernet, and we don't use external memory. So this, this board has 128. Uh, kilobytes of memory and we put a web <coughs> like mongoose on it. So I just uh, do the connection. And this board uses the uh, ECOS profile. So the kernel is it. The microkernel used here is free authors and the microkernel used here is But you have, we have the same base of code to implement it. If you if you take a, a, an object code from uh, generated from Clang, for example, is it possible to put on it? Yeah, it's our next step because I don't um, um, show the future of the left hand, but for me we have to use Clang, for example, because you have a better intermediate re representation and it can be really useful if, if people use uh, Clang and test it to, to build left hand. So it's it's yeah. interesting for us. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay, thank you very much.